Hello, and welcome to North Country Matters. My name is Donna Seymour, and I'm your host for this show. I'm also a member of the St. Lawrence County League of Women of the Voters, one of the civic partners for this for our program here. My guests today are leaders from two of the leagues who serve our northern New York area. With me are Kathleen Stein, president of the St. Lawrence County League of Women Voters, and Diana Wardell and Helen Nerska, who are co-presidents of the League of Women Voters of the North Country. On February 14th, the League of Women Voters will be 102 years old. So let's start our conversation by taking a quick look at the history of the League. The League grew out of the women's suffrage movement, which was a 72-year struggle for women to gain the vote. And the League of Women Voters uh, was founded by Carrie Chapman Catt in 1920 during a convention of the National American Suffrage Association. That convention was held just six months before the 19th Amendment to the Constitution was ratified, giving uh, women the right to vote. Helen, you've done some extensive study on that topic. Can you give us a brief overview of the struggle for vote in your part of the North Country? Well, yes, um, I'll try to be brief. As a historian, I tend to go on and on. But uh, we started our activity in about the 1890s. The women started working toward uh, getting the, their franchise. And they worked straight right through to 1917. It's, it's interesting that Clinton County voted against suffrage both in 18, or 1915 and 1917. But the league itself uh, was first formed in the county shortly after. I, um, we've documented that it was probably formed in 1921 um, and contained both suffragists and anti-suffragists. Um, they had been working together on the Women's Civic League before 1920. So it looks like they just extended that, that uh, interest into our, our league. Um, Carrie Chapman Catt, theoretically, or in, in, we, we believe, um, appointed the first president who was Marion Parkhurst. Marion Parkhurst was one of the Clinton County Fabulous Five suffragists that we, uh, we promote and talk about uh, pretty regularly. Um, the, um, the league went on uh, and is recorded in the papers until about 1928. And at that point in time, it, um, uh, we, haven't, we didn't hear anything more about it, but we do know because um, Diana and I have met one of the women who started the league up again in 1964. So it's, it's quite exciting for us. Um, the gap we don't understand, but we know we started strong and we know that we're going to, we're continuing to finish strong, so. Well, that's the important part, isn't it, always? You know, um, uh, I think St. Lawrence County's League has a, a kind of a similar uh, experience that it was uh, early suffragists who had worked very hard to get the vote, who then combined to, to, uh, to get uh, the first league started here, which was in 1920. Uh, Canton's Elizabeth Best Ford was really the founding mother of the St. Lawrence County League. She was the chair for several years, the regional chair of the area. And uh, there's a, a letter uh, from uh, the league in the league archives that describes her being motored to Augensburg by Mrs. Ford to call upon each member to join and recruit new members. So that's a lot of dedication to go house by house. In, uh, in 1922, dues for the league were $1.00. And at that meeting, it was voted to set aside 10 cents of each dollar to promote a regional league to include Franklin and Clinton counties. So uh, it's very possible that uh, we had some of our organizers helping your organizers to get going. Exactly. Uh, Diana, would you talk a little bit about uh, your league and uh, of the North Country and the territory it takes in and the kind of services that your group provides? Sure. Um, the North Country League serves Clinton and Essex counties, and we offer many services, including voter registration materials and voter guides, hosting and assisting with candidate forums, uh, campaigns to increase voter turnout, and hosting regular public forums on a variety of topics, including the upcoming February 17th forum on climate change by local expert Dr. Ray Johnson. Our league uh, provides voter information to high schools and colleges and annually selects a high school junior as a delegate to the Students Inside Albany program. 
And members of the league also attend naturalization ceremonies. They attend city, town, county meetings. They work as election night reporters for the Associated Press and volunteer as poll workers for their county's board of elections. The leagues at every level work together to be observers of government and advocate on many issues. In New York State, our leagues advocate for the equitable access and cost containment in healthcare, streamlining the New York State court system, and supporting legislation to protect natural resources and public health and economy from the impacts of the fossil fuel industry. The league favors the development of renewable energy. And the state leagues also support uh, equitable assessment and property tax systems, as well as fair pay reforms. And here in our state, the league supports measures to expand early voting, supports no excuse absentee voting, and supports reducing the voter registration deadline. Thank you. And I think we should also mention that um, league meetings are open to the public. So for folks who might be interested in your climate change meeting, that will be by Zoom and you would welcome any participation from across the region, wouldn't you? Absolutely. It'll be seven o'clock by Zoom. Okay, great. Um, Kathy, you were one of the prime movers behind the effort to rekindle the league here in St. Lawrence County after it had gone into kind of a hiatus about 2000 due to leadership fatigue and low membership numbers. How did that come about and how does our league serve our area now? Yeah, thanks, Donna. Um, yeah, it was it was the divisive um, presidential campaign and you know election of 2008 that really caused uh, people you know who were members at large um, of the league um, to, to say, we really need to reform the league. <laughs> we thought that was a very divisive um, election. <laughs> Little did we know. Um, and indeed, one of the reasons that the St. Lawrence County League has been growing and new members have, have been telling us is that they are disgusted by the um, you know, poisonous uh, polarized uh, political atmosphere. So you know, we're, we're happy to, to be a place where people who want to engage in civic activities, and we, we do many of the same activities that Diana was just uh, describing that the North Country League uh, does. And St. Lawrence, we represent St. Lawrence County, of course, but we are also gaining members in Jefferson County where there isn't uh, a league. So we're, we're kind of expanding. Um, we do, uh, in, in addition to the, you know, voter registration, providing voter guides, uh, to, to um, various student groups, to public libraries and whatnot. Uh, we also tape our conversations with candidates that Donna is the, uh, the host of, uh, as well as North Country Matters shows on various uh, issues uh, such as this one. Um, we've also been uh, engaged with the towns of uh, Canton and Potsdam recently on working on um, education campaigns dealing with curbing plastic uh, waste. And that, so that's been a strong interest uh, of our members uh, recently. Oh, and Kathy, just for, um, just for a moment, if you could explain, we're a member at large league rather than a more formally organized league. Can you explain what that means to folks? Yeah, yeah. There's it's it's a, a different a different kind of league than the the full chapter that um, Helen and Diana are our co presidents of. You know, members at large. Anybody can be a member of the league. You don't have to be a member of a local league, but members at large can come together, and we we're a little bit more loosely organized, um, but we are recognized uh, by the state and. We, we can um, work as, as a unit, we can advocate uh, for various league policies uh, as, as a unit, and we hold meetings and, um, and, and all that kind of thing. We just don't have quite the, uh, the full formal uh, structure. Our, um, our accounts, our financial accounts are taken care of by the state, for example. We don't, we don't have our own um, bank accounts and that kind of thing. Oh, thanks. So most people, and both of you have just described that, that they associate the league with voter services. Um, it, in truth, though, it has always been a, a moderate, multifaceted organization since its inception. The, support, the league supports the concept that every issue is a woman's issue, and that we 
reflect America's pluralism rather than the narrow focus of a single or a limited issue. The League is slow to support issues using the consensus model of agreement, but this has turned out to be a very powerful tool for the League as it investigates issues and takes possessions, positions on them. One of the reasons the League is a trusted and respected voice on policy matters is this, this uh, slow to take a position. Um, Kathy, can you just expand a little bit about that on how we come together to speak as one voice? Yes, yes. It's um, the, the League um, engages in a process that begins with a study, a position to study. Members members propose that they think that the league should adopt a particular position. Um, and this can be done at the local level, the state level, the national level. Um, and then um, leagues, you know, league members volunteer to engage in a study of, of all facets of the issues. Then they present the position, background material, pros and cons for adopting the, the position. And um, then members consider this, they look over the materials, the study materials and vote. And if a majority of the members of, of a, either you know, a local league or for a state league, majority of members from around the state. So in other words, it can't just be you know, one part of the state that supports a position. It vote that the league should adopt the position. It does. And then league members can, can look you know, refer to that position and they can speak to their elected representatives as the league. They can say the league, I'm a member of the League of Women Voters, the league supports this position. We think you should, you know, vote for this uh, legislation. So that's how the process works. It can be frustrating, but it does ensure that we speak with, with one voice. The league can also, you know, one state league or one local league, they can agree, they can concur with each other's positions as well. So in other words, you'd, uh, an, if a study has been done on an issue, another local or state league doesn't have to redo that study uh, from scratch if they think that's a position worth adopting. Oh, great. Thank you. Diana, let's talk for a minute about um, nonpartisanship and what that means to the league. It seems to be one of the most difficult concepts for non-league members to understand that we are nonpartisan. Can you give yes. us a little help with that? Sure, Donna. Um, first, the league is nonpartisan, not bipartisan. Bipartisan means representing both parties. The league represents no party. The bylaws of the League of Women Voters stipulate that the league shall not support or oppose any political party or candidate. And this policy of nonpartisanship has always been a source of strength to the League and is the cornerstone of our voter services efforts. Candidates are willing to appear on our platforms and to give us material for our voter guides because they have confidence that they will be treated fairly and that the material will not be used for partisan purposes. The League's purpose is to promote political responsibility through informed and active participation in government and to act on selected governmental issues. It urges all its members to become fully informed about candidates and issues, and it encourages all members, except its directors and those members who represent the League before the public, to work actively in the party of their choice. With these exceptions, League members may seek an active role in the nomination of candidates for public office. They can run for office. In general, they can take part in the political activities of their choice. Every League member must take the responsibility for clearly differentiating between their personal opinions and the League opinions or the League position. And I hope that clarifies the nonpartisan basis of the League. Thank you. And again, I think that's one of the reasons why we are a trusted uh, voice on issues in, in um, all of our communities. Um, Helen, let's take a, a moment here to talk about who can join the League and how membership works. Can you give us uh, kind of a laundry list of what people need to know about membership in the League? Well, the list starts with that you can, uh, your age, and you can be um, um, 16 years old and join the league, which is a, which is great because it 
It helps us get into the students and talk to the students about this incredible right they have to vote or will have to vote. Um, both men and women can belong. Uh, the league charter was amended in uh, 1973 to include men. It does seem a little late. In 1973, I think, um, women got the right to buy a car by themselves. So this 1970s era was kind of important and it was also important to our league and it, and it, um, it allowed men to join. So that was great. And also when you do join, and, and Diana sort of mentioned this, maybe she covered it totally, but the, when you do join, we don't ask you um, what your political party is or um, we don't, if you have joined the league, then you know why you're there. You're there because you support what the league supports and it doesn't matter which side you're on. That's one of our strengths that we don't talk about that. It's kind of obvious sometimes, but it's not something we discuss. Um, and also we, um, we're we across, across the nation. I was in Nevada and um, was very interested in the League of Women Voters in, in Nevada. There are leads uh, right across the nation and over 700 and in all 50 states. So that's pretty impressive, I think. The other thing is the League says that it has a half million members and support there's a supporter behind them so i think that uh that we have we can we'll brag someday much, much more than the half a million thank you helen very much so diana let's take the next step which is how do you become a league member well uh, the easiest way to join is to visit uh the new york state league's website and click the join button there's over 40 local leagues and the state league will forward the information to the local league in your area if there is one, or you'll be a member at large in the state league and still get all the information and newsletters from the state and, and national league. The cost is $60 for an individual membership and 85 for a family membership. And as a member, you will stay informed about issues and government and make your voice heard and sharpen your advocacy skills. Thank you. You know, joining the League of Women Voters is a great way to get involved in the community and to play an active role in our democracy. And these days, we need all the democracy help we can get. So, Kathy, you're a member of the St. of the excuse me of the New York State League Board, and you've been working on an initiative uh, for a rural league caucus. Can you tell us a little bit more about that, both here in the state and nationally? Yes, I'd be happy to. Um, and this really was a product of the of the circumstances of the pandemic, I must say, in the spring of 2020, um, at the suggestion of one of our college student members and the League welcomes college student members, um, we uh, put out a call and formed a New York State Rural Caucus and uh, enabled by Zoom technology. Um, there are 10 local leagues from uh, the rural parts of the state of New York, um, actively involved in the Rural Caucus. And we meet every other month, we share experiences, we discuss issues particular to our rural areas and, and um, sometimes bring those to the attention of the state league. One example was um, legislation to form a task force to study how better to support rural emergency medical services, rural ambulance services. This is just a major problem here in rural counties. And the State League um, wrote a memo of support and we you know, rallied our members to, to lobby and that task force has been formed. We're still waiting to see what it produces, but, but nonetheless, we, were, we supported that. And so that's you know, one example of what the State Rural Caucus has been able to do. An outgrowth of that has been a um, national group. And we have members from 30 states um, and from across, yeah, 30 different states, you know, coast to coast. And that group is currently working on um, you know, rural healthcare access, um, voting rights, and also broadband access, which is uh, universally a, a major issue for rural leagues. Because of the influence of this, that the initiative starting in New York State, Texas 
is considering producing, a, you know, forming a rural caucus of leagues there. And I'm going to be um, speaking at a workshop for the Texas State Leagues Convention in April about the subject of forming a rural caucus. So, And, and you know, I think we should also mention that um, because of Zoom technology, we've also had an opportunity to create kind of a new concept, which is a sister league concept. Can you give a little bit of an explanation about how we are sister leagues with uh, some rural folks in Texas? Yes, this is this is a brand new thing. The um, the League of Women Voters of South Central Texas, which covers five counties, their their five those five counties have the same amount of population as St. Lawrence County, so they are seriously rural. Um, but um, uh, yeah, that we have formed a sister league um, relationship with them. We had a uh, a, a program on rural health care and you know how the some of the the problems, particularly the pandemic, but also just you know uh, endemic problems for rural health care access with you know their their county their counties and uh, St. Lawrence County or you know really rural New York. And that was that was very successful. Uh, we may be doing another program on caregiving, child care uh, in particular, but also home care uh, with them comparing, uh, you know, shared issues. So that uh, I think that's going to be a very fruitful relationship and a very uh, interesting, uh, you know, uh, thing going forward. Well, thank you uh, for that. And, you know, we're, we may be rural, but we're doing some cutting edge things up here, aren't we? <laughs> yes, we are. Yes, we are. So uh, I want to remind folks that 2022 is going to be a very active and busy year for the league all over the country, as well as here as in New York State and the North Country. We're just sorting out our new state and congressional uh, districts for voting, which are going to mean that some people are going to have to learn about a new voting district based on how the lines have changed. Um, there will be a primary election here in New York State in June and, of course, the general election in, in November. Plus, candidates at all levels will be starting the petition gathering process on March 1st in New York State. And in, nine, and in 2022, we're going to see all of the Assembly and the State Senate seats up for re-election, as well as the, the governor and whatever local um, issues and offices might be on our, our ballots. So Helen and Diana and Kathy, thank you so much for being with us today and helping us to tell the league story. The league is proud to be nonpartisan, neither supporting nor opposing, opposing candidates or political parties at any level of government, but always working on the vital issues of concerns to members and the public. We're two, 101 years strong and with any luck, we'll have another 102 years to go once we hit our uh, birthday uh, mark of uh, February 14th. So thanks again for coming and for sharing uh, your league stories. Thank you for having us and happy birthday to the league. Happy birthday to the league indeed. So these conversations are a production of North Country Matters. This show is a civic collaboration between the League of Women Voters of St. Lawrence County and the Potsdam Public Library. Until next time, remember, our North Country Matters.